Hello, my name is Lukas Oldenburg and today I'm going to look at the various privacy modes that Peewick Pro offers. And my journey started at this article of Peewick Pro, how to do useful analytics without personal data. And well, since Peewick Pro has established itself as a valid uh, web analytics alternative on the market, I think we should take a look at deeper look at their USP, which is um, complying with various privacy um, laws and still enabling kind of a useful uh, style of analytics. And what was a bit confusing for me in the beginning was that here this article uh, portrayed three modes that you could use to, tr to, to track anonymous data um, with Peewick Pro. Um, as I later found out, it's not really that there are these three modes and you can switch on mode one, two or three. Um, each of these modes consists of various settings that you have to um, activate or um, configure individually. So let's look at various individual settings that I think are important to understand when working with Peewick Pro. So first of all, there's this anonymous tracking mode, which has probably a, I don't know, I think a bit of a misleading name because all that this anonymous tracking mode really does is it masks all IP bytes or the, your IP address is nulled and GYP data below country level will be anonymized. And you can recognize that this mode is switched on by looking at the HTTP request to Peewick Pro. For example, here I'm on a website. I'm not showing the website, but it's actually also not that secret what the website is, but on this website, I've activated for the testing purpose, this uh, um, anonymous tracking mode. And you see there's a parameter called UIA equals one. And that gives Peewick Pro the signal that the anonymous tracking mode is switched on. As I'm showing in the article, you can either, if you use uh, Peewick Pro's tag manager and full blown approach, you can set um, the, um, set user is anonymous to true before you initialize Peewick Pro or before you fire a page view, or you can follow my guide on how to extend, and that's the better method, I think, to extend the Peewick Pro Analytics Google Tag Manager template because it's more efficient than putting the whole Tag Manager of Peewick Pro on top of your existing Tag Manager onto your website. Of course, if you use Peewick Pro Tag Manager, then uh, the other method might be an option too. I'm not quite sure if Peewee Pro's Tag Manager supports the anonymous tracking mode at all in some form. I haven't checked that, but this is how you do it in code. And uh, my, my uh, article shows you how you can extend the Peewee Pro Analytics uh, template for Google Tag Manager to get this use anonymous mode uh, field in your, um, in your Peewee Pro tag. And then you can, for example, tie it to uh, consent level. So if there's consent to a session cookie only, then you want this to return true. So this data element in this case, this data element, this variable in this case returns true and the anonymous mode will be activated. Next up, the session ID, or let's call it the session fingerprint because it's in essence a fingerprint of the session. So it takes various browser and operating system identifiers. So the visitor's IP address, operating system, browser name, browser version, browser language, and enable browser plugins. So these five attributes or six or seven um, create a hash and that hash becomes the session ID. You can never see the session ID. It exists only on Peewick Pro servers as far as I understand. Um, so this hash lives only for 30 minutes or let's say until 30 minutes of inactivity. And that way Peewick can stitch together your session to a certain degree, depending on your browser and whatever, how unique you are, um, even if you don't use cookies. Uh, again, it's just session only. So next day or an hour later, it won't recognize me anymore. Um, but uh, it's important to know that there is some sort of fingerprinting in play at Peewick Pro if, and that's up to you, if you don't deactivate it. But before we get to how to deactivate it, let me talk about the session cookie because I, in the beginning thought, ah, it's like in another tool, session ID is basically the value of the session cookie. That was, that's what made sense to me. But 
it turned out that the session cookie, so take a look here, we have a session cookie, that's a PK SES compared to the PK ID. The PK ID is the user ID cookie and the PK SES is the session cookie, but not the session ID. So this session cookie is not the session ID. The session ID is the session fingerprint or browser session fingerprint as you want, whatever you like. And the session cookie is this PK SES cookie, which expires after 30 minutes. Um, and it's used, it's used to increment uh, session count in the client so that they don't have to calculate that on the server every time a new user arrives on the website. So to make it a little bit quicker on the website to do things and to uh, generate some of the engagement reports, uh, for example, a table showing users group by a number of sessions or number of sessions needed before the first order, that's the official um, wording uh, message from Pewik Pro on what that session ID that session cookie, sorry, is used for at all. Supposedly, this is Matomo or Matomo, whatever this is, uh, how do you pronounce it? Legacy code, legacy thing. This is PK says cookie. People who really doesn't need it for anything besides the, the mentioned things. And according to people who you could even block this cookie and still get almost um, the same type of quality. Uh, data. So Pwik does not calculate sessions in the browser like Google Analytics 4 does. <laughs> um, they do calculate them on the server. They just need this PK test cookie for some uh, reports. And my article also shows and Pwik Pro as well shows us how to do that. Um, you can turn off that session ID. So now we're back at the session ID, not the session cookie, the session ID, that fingerprint. You can turn that off in administration, sites and apps, privacy, ask visitors for consent um, and use a session ID and that has to be switched off. And um, then you can work without that session ID. I would recommend you not using the session ID unless there's a real big reason for that. I'm not a big fan of fingerprinting, fingerprinting even if it's just for a session. So let's talk about the session cookie again, but not the PK says cookie, but um, a cookie that lives just for a session. And let's maybe first say that there's also a way to completely disable cookies. That's pretty easy. Just PAQ push disable cookies, just where I had uh, this set user anonymous mode earlier, uh, the same place where you would, would put disable cookies. Um, but um, how do you now track the user with only a session cookie. So my goal initially was to set only a session cookie like the French Knill allows it um, and then track the users only with a session cookie if we have only very limited consent. Um, and I thought I could do this with only one cookie, but it turns out you need both cookies or let's say Pwik doesn't allow you to block that PK sets cookie or not uh, not set it because Pwik always sets both the PK sets and the PK ID cookies um, and you cannot um, deactivate either via Pwik's own method. As I said, the PK sets cookie is not very important. So you can probably block that through your consent manager and no big harm will be done. But there is no way to say I want only the only a session cookie or something. Well, there is a way, but the way is simply in setting that visitor cookie, the PKID cookie, to an ex, uh, to um, an expiration time of 30 minutes. And that's very easy. You just have to know it. So just at the same place where you would um, initialize your Pwik Pro tag, you'd set uh, your visitor cookie timeout to 1,800, and that's 1,800 seconds, which means 30 minutes. Um, and in my article, I also show you how to make this a um, dynamic setting in your Google Tag Manager template. So you can say, hey, set a visitor cookie timeout dynamically and that will then, that, that value can then be set, for example, depending on your, um, um, on your, um, uh, your, on your, on your consent level. So if you have session cookie consent only, 
you can set that to um, 30 minutes if you have more than session content cookie only then you can set it to, for example i set it to six months or or a year or whatever you prefer so in summary you can use pwik pro with just session cookie length so which is 30 minute cookie length that's no problem but you cannot use it with just one session cookie so you always need two cookies but one of them can be set to only 30 minutes expiration the other one is set to 30 minutes expiration anyway the pk says cookie um, um, secondly session id and session cookie have nothing to do with each other the session id is a browser fingerprint that lives as long as the session lives um, you cannot see the session id it's on the server of pwik pro only um, and I'm not gonna say everything from the article here, but let's um, fin finalize this by looking at the anonymous tracking mode one more time. And the anonymous tracking mode has a bit of a misleading name. It simply deactivates IP based tracking. Maybe there's more, but Pwik doesn't tell us. So if there's more, please Pwik, uh, let us know. Um, I'm not sure if you should use this anonymous tracking mode at all because you can set in the settings whether you want to anonymize IP addresses and it's best practice or it's actually <laughs> legally binding in the EU to do that anyway. So the anonymous tracking mode doesn't add that much more by completely nulling the IP addresses in my opinion, but that's up to you. Last but not least, I created my own little summary table of the privacy concepts of PWIC that I found most challenging to distinguish and most important to distinguish. Uh, there's a screenshot in the article, but you can also go to the Google Doc and uh, comment it. Um, correct me if I made some mistakes. Thank you very much for that already, and I hope you will read the article. There's much more in the article than I have shown that I have shown here in the video. Um, Feel free to post any feedback and comments. Thank you very much and have a great day.